After last season, the Dallas Mavericks said fear exists that Luka Doncic will request a trade in the summer of 2024 if Dallas does not make significant progress by then. Since that report, Luka's frustration has been more and more obvious. Technical foul, I believe, by Luka. And if there's an Achilles heel, this is it. He's lucky he wasn't thrown out. Luka's still complaining. Here comes a second defender. Luka picks up the dribble. He finds Seth Curry. Bobbled ball. Shot away and blocked and the game is over. The Mavericks lose the game after leading by 20 points. Luka driving kick. Jones lets her rip from the corner. Oh my. What just happened with Chris Dunn and Luka? I didn't do nothing. He's just mad. I'm watching this game. This came after to end the 2023 season. The Mavericks decided to bench both Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic in a move that both of them completely disagreed with, and Luka's frustration has continued to grow right in front of our faces. We have seen this pattern before. A young star who has tremendous success in the NBA, but his team is simply not cutting it, and then that young star leaves around year six or seven. If you don't believe me, here are 10 recent players who have left their team within seven seasons due to the fact that they either wanted their own team to star on such as Kyrie or T-Mac or Kawhi <laughs> or because their management failed them. Anthony Davis demanded a trade in year seven. LeBron James and Chris Bosh both joined the Miami Heat after year seven. Vince Carter demanded a trade during year seven and Chris Paul in year six where we are with Luka demanded a trade that ended up seeing him pair with Blake Griffin in Los Angeles. It is obvious time is running out for the Dallas Mavericks and Luka Kodacic, and we are certainly going to get into the Mavs failures. But first, what's up, Mike here, and we need to talk about how at this point in time, Luka Doncic is being straight up disrespected. But before we continue, guys, I want to thank NBA Infinite for sponsoring today's video. NBA Infinite is the new free-to-play PvP mobile basketball game where you are able to collect your own stars to build your dream NBA lineup and create your own dynasty. Challenge your friends to play in 1v1, 3v3, or even 5v5 modes. Take your skills online with the multiplayer functionality or take the more casual mode honing your skills in three-point contests and 11-point games. Cross up your opponents with exclusive and dominant skills that are unique to each NBA star so you can nail the perfect give and go to hit the game-winning buzzer beater all from the comfort of your own phone. Open packs and assemble your legendary players to build a dynasty and make a run at the Larry O'Brien trophy. And the hype is real as star player Carl Anthony Towns is gracing the game as the cover athlete Athlete with veteran announcer Mark Jones providing play-by-play -play commentary in game. So guys, click the link in the description down below to get in the game with NBA Infinite. The game is a lot of fun. Again, go click the link in the description, download NBA Infinite, and for now, let's get back into the video. Because of his team's failures, the media has been poking more and more into Luka's game. We've heard that perhaps players do not want to play with Luka because he's too ball dominant. However, per the website Crafted NBA, Luka creates 18.4 open shots for his teammates per 100 possessions, a number that tops the NBA over Tyrese Halliburton, who is an NBA all-star with the reputation for being one of the most willing passers in the game. Kyrie Irving, a man who has a reputation himself for certainly being outspoken, has said nothing but great things about playing with Luka. Jalen Brunson was recently seen being best friends with Luka Doncic at the All-Star game. In fact, none of Luka's past teammates other than Kristaps Porzingis have had a problem with him as he gets them more open shots than anyone else in the league while also providing absolutely historic levels of production. Does Luka have the second highest usage rate in the NBA this season? Yes, that is a number that is justified because when Luka has the ball, he is playing at a historic pace. This season, Luka is averaging 34.6 points, 9.8 assists, and nine rebounds per game. Only two players have finished a season averaging over 30 points, nine assists, and nine rebounds. Oscar Robertson, who achieved this four times in the 1960s, and Russell Westbrook, who won the NBA MVP for these types of numbers. Luka, though, has seemingly been penalized for his instant success as, while in just his second year, he finished fourth in the MVP voting with 28.8 points, 8.8 assists, and 9.4 rebounds per game as a 20-year-old, it was his second season where he finished highest in the MVP voting. This is despite the fact that Luka has made four straight first-team All-NBAs in his first five seasons, something that in the post-merger era, only three players have done. Luka, Tim Duncan, and Larry 
Larry Bird. Luka is doing things we have almost never seen before as Duncan and Bird were on NBA juggernauts. The Celtics and Spurs were teams that won championships and were always in contention during those time frames, while Luka has been on questionable roster after questionable roster. And because of this, he has not finished higher than fifth in the MVP voting since his second season, and he was just eighth in the race last year. Nothing is worse than feeling disrespected when you are playing at a historic pace while people continue to poke at your game because your management is letting you down. At this point in time, the Dallas Mavericks are both not contenders this season, and they have absolutely zero chance of ever being contenders unless something wild and crazy happens like LeBron James decides he wants to come to the Mavs. Even with the addition of another all-star caliber player in Kyrie Irving, the Mavericks this season are currently eighth in the NBA with a potential play-in game looming against the Los Angeles Lakers or Golden State Warriors. Even if the Mavs were to win the play-in game, it is very, very likely that they will take a first round exit this season, aka they will have not made significant progress. On his end, Luka has tried his absolute best. Again, there has been one player that has had a problem with Luka, and that is Kristaps Porzingis, who himself admitted he was immature during that situation. I'd say it went both ways there, but the results ended up speaking for themselves, as after Porzingis was traded to the Wizards in 2022, Luka proceeded to lead the Mavs to the Western Conference Finals with a starting lineup that included Jalen Brunson, now an all-star for the New York Knicks, and then Dorian Finney-Smith, Reggie Bullock, and Dwight Powell. In 2024, Smith is averaging under 9 points per game, while Bullock and Powell are averaging under 4 points per game. Luka's 2022 playoff run was the definition of carrying a team on your back, as in the playoffs his stats were spectacular with 31.7 points per game, 10 more than Brunson who was second on the team, while Luka also led the Mavs with 9.8 rebounds, over 4 more than anyone else, and 6.4 assists, almost 3 more than Jalen Brunson. On top of Luka's greatness on the stat sheet, we also got a legitimate historic do not poke the bear moment, as in round 2, Chris Paul and Devin Booker on the Suns openly mocked Luka after they took a 3-2 series lead to which Luka... 27 point lead, down goes Johnson, free lead. Deep in his bag like the fries are at the bottom. Luka Doncic is absolutely putting on a show here. Luka would follow these words up by dismantling Phoenix while literally laughing in their faces as he did so. But somehow after making the Western Conference Finals with one of the best young players we have ever seen, Dallas decided to let Jalen Brunson walk away for nothing. Something that Luka clearly did not agree with as we saw on JJ Reddick's podcast. Did you have any idea Jalen Brunson would be this good? Yeah. You did? Yeah. Why? The way he worked out every day, coming back in the afternoon, you know, it was just amazing to play with that guy. And while we did hear at the time that there might be chemistry issues between Brunson and Luka, Jalen Brunson himself has told a completely different story. There were two times that I thought we had offers on the table before the season, and then around, I think, December or January, they had every right in the world to do so. I don't blame them for making any business decisions. That's on them. And that is on them. The Mavericks are paying the price right now. How much have you guys missed Bronson? <laughs> A lot. As for the 2024 season, the NBA set their salary cap at $136 million. For the 2025 season, the Mavericks already have $171 million committed to players who are obviously not getting the job done. Tim Hardaway Jr. has been awful. He is averaging 16 points per game on poor shooting numbers and is contributing no rebounds and no assists. He also is playing horrendous wing defense, which possibly is Dallas's biggest weakness. A lot of people are pointing the blame at Jason Kidd this season. He's a Dallas Mavericks head coach. That is very understandable, and I don't think he's been doing a good job. The players his management have gotten him, though, are simply just not good enough to compete at a championship level in today's NBA. Josh Green has regressed this season, averaging less points per game while his shooting has dropped from 53.7% last year to 48.8% this year. And looking back at Crafted NBA, we can see he is also a negative wing defender. Green is owed over $45 million. Gafford, PJ Washington, and Maxi Kleber are all owed over 11 million until 2027. These are not trade assets that can get any type of star from another team. And the Mavericks have locked themselves in financially so that they are not able to get a big time free agent. Even in NBA 2K, this would be difficult to pull off. In real life, it's near impossible. And when we look at the Dallas Mavericks track record of decisions, Luka Doncic should run away from this situation. In 2019, reportedly, Harrison Barnes mid-game 
is being traded to Sacramento for Justin Jackson and Zach Randolph. Randolph would have been a great piece in the early 2010s. Justin Jackson did nothing of note before the Mavericks moved him for James Johnson, who also did nothing of note. Meanwhile, Harrison Barnes did the impossible. He helped the Sacramento Kings make the playoffs. At the very least, he would have been a positive player on the recent Mavericks teams, and he also would have been a movable trade piece. Continuing on in 2020, when Seth Curry was in his prime, the Mavs traded him to the Sixers, where he was a big piece on a team that finished first in the Eastern Conference, for Josh Richardson, who did nothing of note before they moved Richardson for Moses Brown, a man who averaged three points per game. The Kristaps Porzingis trade actually did become a silver lining for the Mavs, as they landed Spencer Dinwiddie, who helped them make the Western Conference Finals, and then they were able to trade for Kyrie Irving by using Spencer Dinwiddie as one of the main trade pieces. However, Dallas combined this decision with the decision to let Jalen Brunson walk instead of locking him in to a four-year $55 million extension. Per Bleacher Report, it was an offer Brunson's camp would have accepted if the Mavericks made it. So in all honesty, would you blame Luka for demanding a trade? If you look at the current roster, if you look at the Mavericks track record when it comes to making trades, and you consider the fact that Luka is just at this point wasting away years of his prime, I will say I would not blame him at all. And so if the Mavericks fear do come true if Luka Doncic does request a trade in the 2024 season then the question becomes where will he end up in the NBA we know one thing for certain when a player demands a trade he controls the situation in a way that the franchise does not like if Ben Simmons can control his destiny after demanding a trade so can Luka Doncic you'd love to imagine that any team would be able to trade for Luka but the reality is Luka says I don't want to go there I won't try if I go there what team's going to trade for him it would make no sense for Luka to go from an eight seeded playoff team to another team that was on the borderline of making the playoffs. He would only demand a trade to go and win a championship, which means potential trade candidates that have the assets to trade for Luka, such as the Orlando Magic, Sacramento Kings, Houston Rockets, Atlanta Hawks, and Utah Jazz would all have to trade away too much to keep a contender going. In the case of a team like the Rockets, there is no contender at all. It's also very unlikely that the Lakers or the Warriors are going to be able to pull off a Luka trade. I would say that would be incredibly entertaining to see, but but the Lakers would have to be able to move Anthony Davis, which seems unlikely. And as for the Warriors, even if they did move Clay or Draymond Green, I don't think the Warriors have enough to make this trade. I don't think Jonathan Kaminga or Brandon Pojemski are the guaranteed all-star type talent that Dallas would be looking for in a trade in which they give away Luka Doncic, one of the best young players the NBA has ever seen. A Luka Doncic trade would have a very, very high price tag on it. And I would say there are four teams that are able to make this trade better better than anyone. The New Orleans Pelicans are in this group, but they are the least likely by far of this group of four, as Luka would have to agree on betting on Zion Williamson as his wingman for the future, which I'm rooting for Zion. I do hope he continues to succeed, but I'm also watching how things play out there because Zion's past has been troublesome when it comes to weight and staying on the court. If Dallas does love Brandon Ingram though, and Herb Jones, it could happen. Moving up in terms of likeliness, if the Denver Nuggets take a bad playoff loss this season in an early round. They could very well look at the Oklahoma City Thunder, see a team that is young and on the rise, and decide to shake up their core and possibly move Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. for Luka, something that Luka and Jokic just joked about while playing in the All-Star game. With that said though, I will say the Nuggets seem very unlikely unless a really bad playoff loss happens and they need to reevaluate everything. Which means I think the two most likely teams to win the Luka Doncic sweepstakes, if there is one, are the San Antonio Spurs and the Oklahoma City Thunder. Victor Wembanyama and Luka would be a pairing that might not be championship ready next season. However, they would certainly be set up to run the Western Conference for the next decade. Wemby has more than lived up to the hype and San Antonio has several picks they can trade this year, including their own as they are currently the third worst team in the NBA, which would mean Dallas would be able to rebuild through the draft and the Spurs entire roster would essentially be available in this trade. I'd imagine players such as Devin Vassell, Jeremy Sohan, and Keldon Johnson would be moved with again, a lot of picks. But speaking of a lot of picks, the Oklahoma City Thunder are in a position to top 
any offer and they have waited to trade for a big time star. The Thunder would immediately provide Luka with a championship ready contending roster as the Thunder would be able to keep Shea Gilgis Alexander and Chet Holmgren while offering the Mavs a plethora of picks alongside young players such as Jalen Williams, Josh Giddy, Lou Dort, Usman Jang, Isaiah Joe. They have a lot of young talent to trade. They have a lot of picks to help rebuild the Mavs roster after giving away Luka. And I would not be surprised in any way if the Thunder do make a run at Luka if they lose in the playoffs this season. A big three trio of Shea, Chet, and Luka would be a young big three that would compete for NBA championships for the foreseeable future. The Thunder without Luka this season are already second in the Western Conference and could win the Western Conference after Carl Anthony Towns just went down, which means if they were to add Luka Doncic, again, a man who has proven he is one of the best young players we have ever seen to their roster, well, that is an incredibly scary thought for anyone who is not a Thunder fan. If we were speaking of potential NBA dynasties, Shea, Chet, and Luka would be, in my opinion, a dynasty to come. But I want to know what your opinion is down below. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Again, comment below. Do you think Luka does demand a trade this offseason? And if he does, where is he going to end up? I'm interacting with comments as much as possible. Really excited to see what you guys say. If you are not already subscribed, please subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss another video. If you're already subscribed, thank you for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music. And if you're still here while the music is cute, I think you'll really like this video we just did on why even Michael Jordan feared Larry Bird's trash talk. Or if you're a goat and you've already seen that one, here is another video on the right that I think you'll enjoy.